Welcome to the Endometriosis Nutritionist video blog. I am Anna Marika Gerritsen, but call me AMG, and I'm a qualified nutritionist. I help women and those assigned female at birth who have endometriosis to create their personal endometriosis diet to reduce the severity of their symptoms and lead a normal life. I share fortnightly video blogs on all things related to how nutrition affects your endometriosis symptoms. Let's start today's video. Hi there, it's Adam Marika Garretson, but call me AMG, and I'm the endometriosis nutritionist. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about how you can prepare for any surgery, any endometriosis surgery that you've got coming up, and also how you can then recover faster using nutrition. Um, because endometriosis surgery, even if it's just a laparoscopy, is invasive. Um, it affects many systems, creates sites of trauma where incisions are made or where tissue is removed, and various chemicals are used on and in your body that need to find their way out again. Um, it really is like running a marathon, and the fitter and healthier you are at the time of surgery, the faster and better you can recover. Um, so the anesthetics, for example, used, so you are either fully under or won't feel pain in the area of the surgery, um, so that those are local anesthetics, end up in your body, and your body needs to get rid of it. Now, in a healthy person, this could take at least a week, and longer in a not-so-healthy person. Your liver needs to work very hard to detoxify these chemicals. So even with it... it with endometriosis surgery like a laparoscopy where the incision can be very small, the act of it causes major trauma on the body and the body responds with a crisis response. Um, your immune system, which is already not your strongest system, kicks into overdrive trying to protect you from invaders and inflammation being its number one strategy means that although your endometriosis may have successfully been removed, your body is in an endometriosis growing state. The other part, or the other system rather, is your digestive system. And it will be shut down, especially if you have general anesthetic. And it will take time for it to wake up again, which is not good if you have constipation as one of your major symptoms, or nausea, or diarrhea, or any digestive symptom. Also, for a laparoscopy, gas will often be added into your abdominal cavity to sort of blow it up and create space. And this gas needs to be absorbed and processed by the liver to be able to be removed from the body. Now, I see endometriosis as similar to running a marathon. So endometriosis surgery, sorry, as a running a marathon. To come through it as well as possible, you need to go in training. What I often see is that People go through surgery, and then once they come out of surgery, they look for ways to become healthier. But that's almost, that's like not doing anything before your marathon, and then after your marathon, you go into training. So I think you need to go into training before you actually have your surgery, because that will help you to recover faster. And nutrition should be a big part of that training. Um, so what does that training look like? Well, let's look at first preparation for the surgery and then how what you can do afterwards to recover faster. So preparing for your endometriosis surgery should start at least two weeks before your scheduled surgery. The aim is to get fighting fit, to get your body in the best possible state so it can handle the procedure better. A big, big part of this is to reduce the effects of your current diet. If you haven't made any diet changes at all to try and manage your endometriosis symptoms, it is very likely that you're eating a lot of things that are creating chronic inflammation. And the surgery experience will further increase that inflammation, so it will help to reduce your inflammation as much as possible before you uh, get well into surgery, and that in itself will increase your inflammation. So, no longer than two weeks before your surgery, Start by removing gluten and dairy, sugar, processed foods, alcohol, and caffeine from your diet. All of these are inflammatory. 
switch to a mostly plant-based diet. Um, if you can still eat meat or, or animal products, but keep it to only a couple of times a week and to small amounts. Um, it will be very beneficial if you eat more fish, especially fatty fish like salmon, tuna, trout, mackerel, because they are chock full of omega-3 fatty acids and those are known to reduce inflammation. Uh, do some light exercise daily. For example, go for a brisk 30 minute walk or a swim or do a yoga session um, every day. Uh, and one week before your surgery, you really want to get serious about what you eat and drink. So go all in. No gluten, no dairy, no sugar, no processed foods or takeaway foods. Because with takeaway foods, even if you think that they're um, healthy, you just don't know what's in them. Uh, avoid all caffeine and alcohol. So you give yourself at least one week to wean yourself off these foods. And then the week before your surgery, just just really really be good uh, you'll need to increase the amount of protein you eat somewhat because protein is needed for new cells um, and, and healing um, so uh, but do so preferably by eating more plant-based protein things like lentils and legumes quinoa nuts and seeds uh, a mostly plant-based diet will also be high in fiber and that will help you if you're constipated all right you have your surgery, you come out of your surgery, um, and afterwards you will be recovering, first in hospital, maybe you can have come out straight the same day, or maybe you have to stay a few days, and then when you get home. Now, whilst you're still in hospital, let the hospital staff look after you, eat what they feed you, take medication, just wait to start your recovery nutrition plan until you get home, where you'll have control over what you eat and drink. So the next two weeks, when you get home, are about giving your body time, rest, and the necessary nutrients to heal and recover. Now remember, your liver will be working overtime and it will need extra support. And there's some, some nutrients that will really help you with your recovery. So look for adding foods that contain vitamin C, um, lots of fruits. You can look at uh, capsicums or bell peppers, um, tomatoes. Look for foods high in omega-3 acids um, so there's um, fish um, but also flaxseed hemp seed and good quality protein again in small doses because especially red meat in itself is inflammatory but a small amount gives you lots of B vitamins and your liver needs uh, those uh, it will give you um, iron which is important for wound healing as well also eat a high fiber diet to help your liver remove the anesthesia and any medication you may be taking. Uh, you might also want to consider taking a turmeric supplement or curcumin. It will help your liver, it will support a healthy gut and it's a natural anti-inflammatory. So these are just some general strategies to prepare for your surgery and recover faster afterwards. Um, now, if you have surgery coming up and are interested in more detailed support, you might like to take a look at my course, Endometriosis Surgery, Get Fighting Fit and Recover Faster. I'll put the link uh, to that course in uh, the show notes. So there, that's it. Um, surgery where you have endometriosis can be a common event um, or maybe it's the first time you will have surgery. Uh, but know that you can deal much, you, you can help your body deal much better with it by preparing for it by, with certain nutrients and, and mostly about removing a lot of the foods that we know are inflammatory. And then once you get home, eat foods that will help you to recover. All right, that's it for today. See you again in a couple of weeks. Bye for now. If you want to learn more about nutrition for endometriosis, go to my website, theendometriosisnutritionist.com.au.